All right, top of the morning, goons and mutants. I am back behind the bench, which is really just a converted studio desk. I'm no longer um, recording, producing, and mastering uh, my own music because of this guy. I can't bend him. He's, he's effectively a slide holder, and maybe that's something I need to explore. Maybe I need to switch hands. Maybe I need to start playing like a lefty and relearn that. I think I'm going to have to make a decision really soon because I miss playing. Now, this is obviously a blonde Fender Showman. What particular year is this, you ask? Well, we'll find out when we get the chassis out. It's in here for um, a, a peculiar reason, and we're going to see if we can discern that for ourselves. Now, we did hear... Let's get the uh, current limiter on. We did hear what uh, the owner had to say about it. And it's just so funny. The, uh, the space between the power and standby switch on this amp seems like a mile compared to the other ones. So this amp does have an interesting feature. And you're going to see it. So uh, we're going to test both channels. I don't think I'm going to use the signal generator for this particular test. I'm going to plug in this guitar. And I just told you that I, I can't play guitar. Well, I can't do what I used to do. There's more like it. That's the truth. Um, let's see what's going on with that bulb. That's what I would expect for an 80-ish watt amp. Nice orange glow. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, I don't know if I could be one take Jake on this thing. But let's, let's take a look at that current limiting bulb there. And I'll zoom in. Or rather, I'll focus in on it for you. You see that? That lovely glow of the filament there. That's what I want to see. What does that tell you? Well, that tells you that, well, you don't have a short, do you? No, you don't. So, um, so she's warmed up. She's ready to go. And I'm ready to make a little bit of noise with this, this guitar. Let's see. So funny. It's out of tune, but who cares, right? a little bit of noise in the volume pot. Not much. Wow. on 10. check out the vibrato channel or as uncle doug would say vibrato control isn't that responsive um, and also the range um, on, on the lower end of the spectrum is uh, not too impressive 
The intensity is not really there either. This has a very special trim circuit, and you can hear there's a phasing effect. Wow. Where's the treble? Where's the gain? So let's crack her open and investigate the goings-on with this vibrato channel and see if we can explore the inside of this beauty. All right, and then we're going to see how good the tech did. Let's take a look. Mostly untouched, except maybe in the 90s. We'll find out, and that's a no-no. So we're gonna to wanna to get that ground onto the chassis, and we'll check to see. Okay, nice. At least he ran the leads properly on the primary. So very cool. Take a look at that tubing. Super interesting, huh? So, all right, so the, uh, the outlet has been disconnected. Um, that's, I remember you saying that, buddy. But I, I like that you kept it there. <laughs> I do like that you kept it there. All right, let me get her out. And then we can appreciate the, the scale of the transformer sizing here. Let's just take a moment to appreciate that there's still some good techs out there. I really appreciate this work. And then moving over here, uh, we see some 1961 iron, which is very cool. So let's dig in and find out where, let's find out where the vibrato channel is being hobbled. All right, now I'm inside. I've got it chucked up onto the stand, uh, fresh schematic. Pulled up on my uh, my computer, and I'm ready to take some measurements. So I'll start poking about. All right, Garrett, we got to the bottom of your uh, loss of clarity, and the vibrato channel came out to be a, a bad tone cap. Actually, the treble cap, that 250 uh, picofarad cap, was holding you back. Well, that's just part of it. Now, the other part of it is that uh, this, uh, this complement of power tubes, this quad of 6L6s, is biased way cold. This should be in uh, the 40 milliamp range, not in the 25. So that's something that I'll address. But just a very cool amp here. <laughs> Incredibly cool amp. So... Let me pop you off this mount here. So yeah, by and large, the tech that was here prior did a pretty good job. Uh, nothing bad to say. Uh, his solder works very clean. You know, he uses good, good components, top shelf. So uh, nothing to complain about there. Um, so I'll assume that the quad drifted, drifted on their own. I don't want to uh, besmirch another uh, tech who I think did good work, but, but again, these are very cold. Uh, your treble cap, Ended up being the culprit on, I would say, the volume and treble attenuation on the vibrato channel. And I don't like uh, this particular style of cap, but it's one that I sub in just for testing, and I'll get a proper ceramic in it. Um, you can see that I have the, uh, the bias resistor there. 
just kind of hanging in the breeze. I'm going to use I'm going to use uh, the bottom leg there as a as a clip point for my decade box, which is this guy. And I'm using these little test clip leads. So one is going to go here. And El Otro is going to go here. Actually, I could have just clipped it in parallel with this little dude right here, the, the lower capacitor. So uh, where was it? That is a 47K resistor. So let's go ahead and dial that in. 44K, 47K. And how am I doing that? Maybe I can show you that way. You can see here that we have 40K selected, 4K, 44K, and then 3K, 47K all together. And that should take us um, back to where we were around 25 milliamps of plate current. So let's experiment. And we're warming up. We have the uh, Decade box in use. Plate current is climbing and climbing to about 24, 25 milliamps, respectively, back where we were. So let's see what the effect is of increasing and decreasing resistance here. So let's go from 40, uh, 47K down to 40K. And that gets us a little closer, doesn't it? But these modern tubes, these modern tubes, um, they want to they wanna be biased hotter. And you'll find that if you keep the same complement of, uh, of resistors on your bias circuit uh, that came from the factory on these old amps, you'll find that you're, you're going to run out of range really fast. And that's where we are here. So in most cases, um, you'll probably end up around uh, 20K of resistance to put her in a sweet spot. We're looking for about 40 milliamps of draw. And if you have a black face fender where your resistor is in the 20K range already, um, then you'll find that that's too much. And you're probably going to end up with around a 6K resistor, somewhere around there. So let's take her to 27K. See? 27K. Puts her right on a sweet spot. And I did not do this prior. It's just a rule of thumb. So we're going to substitute in... Uh, that value of resistance and I have a little bit of wiggle room there so this is gonna do the trick bye all right out with the old and in with the new now, this is as close as I can get you to being over my shoulder I like to take uh, this resistor body and move it as far away from these capacitor bodies as I can it doesn't get extremely hot but anything I could do to help prolong the life these electrolytics, um, I'll, I'll do that. So, using my lead bending tool to do what? To bend the lead. Let's see if I can get, even get this in there. There we go. And I want to take all the stress off of these uh, carbon comp bodies uh, that I can. Doesn't do anybody any good to put strain on there. I'm going to bend it once more. We'll drive it home. So we have nice bends. That's what I like. Bad light situation here. Can hardly see.
All right, there she is. Just have to remove some of that old flux. So why don't we um why don't we sweep on down to the meters here and see if we can get a sense for where the the bias is going to settle. I'll just stick you there. And then this will be the last thing um, for now. Here she goes. A little uh, digital noise is my phone, of course. And I'm looking to get um, between 35 and 40 milliamps. You can see that one pair of tubes is a little bit slower to warm up, which could be an indication of, of its age. And there's a slight discrepancy there, not perfectly biased. And there's about a one milliamp wiggle, which is fine. So uh, there's an open jack there, so there's that noise. Uh, when I get back, uh, we'll do a, a, a sound check. And then I'll see if I need to adjust that uh, oscillator circuit so we can get a little more intensity and, and range with respect to speed. So hope this finds y'all well out there. Bye.